G'day guys, you are watching the Space Lugs. Uh, my name is Tom, and today we've got something a little bit different. So you are about to watch the Never Tell Me The Odds final round between myself and a gentleman by the name of Evil Houdini. Uh, we weren't able to get this on stream, uh, so essentially what I've done is I've recorded it, and I've edited it, and I'm going to try and commentate over the top of it retrospectively. Um, so I won priority, uh, and the first thing that I did was choose the shifting priorities, sorry, the, the Sabotage Showdown mission pack. Uh, I've gone first and I have drawn Captain Rex. So Captain Rex has essentially moved Anakin Skywalker up with Get a Move On Soldier. He is then going to promptly do an advance of his own and essentially take cover into a nice little area of the board, which is going to get him uh, in contesting range of that objective. So I will start handily off with three. So Captain Rex is sort of my early playmaker. I'm not going to shuffle the Shadow Point back in uh, in case I accidentally or unfortunately draw Anakin Skywalker. So if I draw the Shadow Point, I essentially always use Captain Rex initially. Um, so my opponent has drawn Cad Bane. He's decided to put him into reserve, understandably. Uh, and luckily, both of us have a bit of a Shadow Point play early on. So mine is Rex. And of course, my opponent or evil Houdini's is Kalani. So Kalani's in a position where she can dash up all of the droids, which is really good. And then we're about to see a tactical network fire down onto the B2 to tuck it into that little corner there, which will be able to contest the objective from the ground floor, followed by an advance and a take cover just to get into a central position. So we're three apiece essentially, and we're gonna try and break parity, which is cool. Uh, so I then promptly draw uh, Ahsoka, which is a really good shout. Because I've already got Anakin Skywalker in position, I don't really need to use uh, Racia on him again. So instead what I've done is gone and moved uh, General Obi-Wan Kenobi up into a better position, which I think is a good idea. Uh, and then nothing too crazy. She's just going to advance. She's then going to take cover just to get this hunker train really rolling with Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then I'll spend a force for a jump. Um, so that's essentially what I've done. I've decided to try and break parity, score four, uh, which is good. Get her a hunker, which is nice as well with her expertise tree and Obi-Wan's ability, etc. Um, and unfortunately, or not unfortunately, my opponent then decides to go with Cad Bane. Um, so I'm not entirely sure whether or not this is the right move, uh, but essentially I don't want to just give up the objective. So I've decided to let it go. Um, my opponent decided to use uh, how about you step aside and I did decide to take the expose and the strain. Again, I'm not sure if that was the right idea, but essentially what happens is um, he doesn't get the one shot. He does get a pin and a strain and six damage on Ahsoka and shove her off because I was exposed. I don't get the jump back and I do end up getting rid of my hunker token, uh, which will heal the strain, and then the dash subsequently heals the pin. So that's essentially what's happened, and we're now three apiece again. So all my hard work undone by the Cad Bane. So I've drawn the commandos, which again gives me an opportunity to uh, take parity, uh, or sorry, break parity by by um, trying to have a crack at Cad Bane. Now um, I did get a cheeky deflect with Ahsoka because Cad Bane did indeed roll a fail. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, what I'll do is I'll, I'll position these clone commandos in a position where if I do get the uh, the wound on Cad, I can essentially swarm that objective with three bodies from the ground floor, just to make sure I'll take it off the B2, which is behind. CAD on the on the bottom right on the floor um, and if I don't then well you know I can essentially um, come in put some damage on CAD make him easy to, to snipe off later um, and maybe put some conditions on and then just hold that back objective uh, so what I do uh, get is lucky and I do end up getting the wound on CAD I'm not sure if it's lucky but it's what happens um, that indeed triggers Count Dooku's brave but foolish which you're seeing here and the B2 which is right behind CAD uh, ends up uh, having a crack at Ahsoka and getting the wound. Um, so it's, I guess, tit for tat. Um, because I have wounded uh, Cad Bane and I have my commandos in a, in a good position, I am able to uh, move the commandos up onto the ground floor as well. Uh, and because the B2 is the only model contesting on the ground floor, um, I'll have two, which means I'll break parity again and, and, and lucky enough take that objective. So back to four for myself. Um, now, of course, when neither of us are matching the elevation of the objective, which is where Cad is. Um, so it, it's just who, who outnumbers it essentially. So my opponent draws the Magna Guard. Um, 
I think wisely decides uh, to put them in reserve and has gone Kalani again. So this is a really good play. He's essentially moving all of the Magna Guard up into position. Um, and then he's got a really good tactical network play to essentially take off um, or take the objective off of Captain Rex. Now, my opponent did have a chance to score four here, but decided not to. Decided to go for some damage onto the clone commanders, which I do think is probably um, the first mistake uh, of the game. Um, so essentially, this is a really good tactical network, and we'll get into what I see in a second. Um, so... My opponent essentially um, does the tactical network on the Magna Guard um, to dash it onto the objective uh, and then also have a crack into Captain Rex, which is really, really good. Um, so ends up just getting crits through, gets the reposition, shoves Rex twice. He's going to get rid of his hunker uh, and dash back onto the point, which is really nice. But uh, the tactical network did, of course, allow the droids to have two... Uh, bodies on my on, on that objective um, you know taking over my one now my opponent could have done here he could have just moved and then taken hunker uh, and then that would have actually taken the objective off of me but he decides to take a shot into the clone commandos um, with the hunker uh, and protection and steadfast it's not a very good idea um, maybe he was going for the reposition I'm not entirely sure but um, the surefire way to take four for him and, and have a big swing would have been of course to just move and take cover it is a bit boring but it is reliable now I uh, indeed pull Rex I decide well you know I've got an opportunity to maybe dash o Anakin up again but he won't score the point for me so I'm gonna whack him into reserve and this is where I draw Anakin um, you know there's a, a little bit of a, a sigh of relief there I guess because Anakin is a really good candidate to to jump up there and smack the Magna Guard uh, back to the factory so that's exactly what he does he doesn't move uh, he's then gonna spend a force for a jump um, and I think this is a really good uh, use of Anakin's ability. I mean, Magna Guard are incredibly tanky, but as soon as you wound them, they lose, you know, a lot of their efficiency. So I do put him into a position where he does engage both of the Magna Guard, and this is also before they even activate. So it's a, it's a really good turn for me. Anakin, of course, uh, does do a eight dice uh, attack. Um, I mean, it's a pretty standard Anakin roll. He gets about four crits or, you know, four successes through. He gets usually three to four, so he's a pretty good... Uh, tanky boy um, but I do end up using of course I'm going to end this which does uh, put him into a position where he can wound the Magna Guard now of course that doesn't trigger his um, this is where the fun begins ability for moment uh, sorry for a struggle move but it does remove um, uh, the the Magna Guard from contention of that point which uh, which is really really important I would say so I'm really happy with that act Anakin activation even though I'm not going into a primary or a secondary character um, so I do uh, end up scoring four again uh, which has definitely put my opponent on the back foot and he's debating whether or not to draw the Magna Guard or whether to draw ends up drawing picking uh, Kraken uh, and Kraken is not really going to be able to get him into a position to uh, to take the point back because of that Anakin play. So really happy with that one. Um, he ends up dashing the Magna Guard. One of them removes the pin, one of them dashes. We've got an attack into Captain Rex, uh, which definitely does uh, enough, enough damage to wound him. Um, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so a couple of conditions. We're then going to get a tactical network to go onto one of these Magna Guard to have a crack at Obi. Sorry, have a crack at Anakin, um, which uh, which which hurts, but it's not going to get the objective off of me. So uh, my opponent's not really going to score any points here, uh, and he has also evacuated his back objective, which is indeed important. So this is just a bit of a swing into Anakin. Um, I don't think much happens. Five damage goes through. My opponent does get the reposition, which is important. Um, so he falls back a little bit. Um, oh, sorry, he actually comes forward a little bit to make his next activation a little bit better. But he didn't score any points, and he evacuated his back left objective there, as you can see. Uh, and I'm just measuring to see if I can activate Rex and score the objective, which would, of course, give me the five points that I need to win. So that is indeed what I do. I end up uh, moving uh, with get a move on soldier on himself. Uh, this is really important here. Uh, I just want to be within range two for the free recover, because as soon as you get a hunker token on a clone uh, Rex able uh, allows you to heal so I've healed one damage off Anakin and um, I'm just going to go for some free damage into Kraken and maybe even try to get the push off of uh, the objective here um, so just a little cheeky melee into Kraken he will be protected and steadfast so I'm not expecting a lot um, in terms of damage but I might get pretty far up my tree 
So I do end up getting three successes, which is nice. It's just the three crits, um, which is going to be double shove and double heal, which is really nice. I do get one shove uh, through, one damage, but the two heals is also going to remove more damage off of Anakin. So I've basically just won the struggle there and, of course, uh, healed three off of a uh, off of Anakin, uh, and that has allowed me to take the struggle. Now... Obviously, I'm precariously close to Count Dooku there, who has not activated yet. I think at this point, uh, Count Dooku and the B2 battle droids are the last ones to activate. And of course, the Magna Guard. Um, but uh, it, it is worth doing. I will have a hunker token on Rex as well. So if he does get shoved off, I will, of course, be able to just dash back on there unless my opponent can get two bodies, which is really strong. There's the heals off of Anakin. And yeah, here is uh, the move. So what you saw first was get a move on soldier. That gives him the hunker. That's his free tactical or identity. Then I did a combat attack and now I'm doing my move action. I, of course, am engaged, which slows it down. Um, and that will put me on the objective and score five for the win. So very, very cool there. Uh, and a, a nice quick little struggle. Um, so uh, I'll reset and you guys get to see what the next deck is. Uh, here we go. So it is going to be the dash on the shadow point ability um, and my opponent does of course choose the in terms of camera angle the left hand side there which is uh, fitting. Um, so he's got the Magna in reserve which is a really good use of them. Uh, he's essentially going to try and split them up push one of my aft troopers off and get behind Rex. Now of course he won't be able to remove Rex from the point but he can tie it up to prevent me from scoring it so it's a good use of the magna guard there um and yeah he's just going to place that magna guard in a precarious position for me to push it off uh, and he's just going to have a crack at the aft trippers and rex so i think the first attack here is going to be into rex with a hunker token see how many dice he rolls yep six for rex uh, of course six because he has a hunker token and i don't lose my hunker tokens because i've got obi-wan kenobi uh and yep we just get two crits through which is pretty good um which is just going to result in one shove because i am of course steadfast he didn't shove me off the point so i'm not going to use my hunker token i'm going to save it for later and then this is the magna guard attack into my aft troopers so really great role for him he just gets a full tree off of criticals which is essentially going to mean um six damage and a a disarm for my R troopers and they're going to sh get shoved all the way into the back corner so my last two activations for this deck rotation is the aft troopers and of course obi-wan kenobi so basically um i've got one force left um i'm probably going to spend that force on obi-wan uh, and whatever happens to the aft troopers i'm probably not going to worry about um, but essentially that is going to allow my opponent to score three points uh, and he will also be using uh cad bane's i'll take any job for the right price just to get him off that point away from the midline um, and hopefully he gets a few more triggers um, on uh, on him with the damage or the jumps or something similar so just trying to reposition cad a little bit and make some way maybe for the b2s to come in because they are yet to activate uh, and that pillar is definitely being blocked by cad so there we go so the priority gets hit into the center uh, i do draw obi-wan kenobi and i'm very happy with that so he's essentially just going to move up he's going to spend my last force on hello there uh, and he's going to jump up i'm staying out of range four here from cad bane's ability because i don't want to just get uh two free damage off of cad bane from i'll take any job for the right price uh, and i'm just going to add a damage into the pool with the commandos so i can tempt the one shot if i do end up getting it and i also can't coordinate a fire and expose at this point so here we are so it's uh, a standard obi-wan kenobi roll i end up getting five successes because he did actually get a really really good uh, defensive roll he got three for three there so i'm and essentially just going to shove him twice i'm not going to follow up and i'm going to condition him out and that's uh you know obi-wan might not have um the most damage dealing uh, activations in the world but uh my goodness does he apply conditions so i've just applied an expose a disarm and a pin onto kalani um for eight damage so very very cool um so i really like obi-wan kenobi now unfortunately you know it's not going to swing that many points for me i end up getting two uh, and then my opponent does get the objective um uh, that is controlled by his magna guard at this stage and he's going to have a crack into rex so this is just his identity move called leader of the separatist army uh, he could also dash someone else if they were within range three but they're not and he's just going to focus and smack into captain rex here um, so dooku you know doesn't do the most damage uh, but his identity is doing a lot of heavy lifting in this game just because it's you know preventing me from really going who 
against who I want to, uh, because I don't want to tempt the um, the double refresh of force, the heals, and you know all of the all the out of activation movement and attacks, etc. Um, so this is essentially he he doesn't get um, the wound on Rex. He did he did need six, but he ends up only getting five. Um, and I just want to I know that his B twos are the last one to activate. So I essentially want to make it as difficult for him as possible um, to get that wound snipe on Captain Rex. And I'm hoping, you know, if I survive until the next rotation and I draw Rex early, I can heal him up with all of his abilities. So that's essentially why I've dashed away there, just to make it a little bit difficult uh, for my opponent to get that wound on Rex. So essentially, I've um, just quickly activated the Arfs there. Um, they unfortunately only did like one damage and a, and a pin on the Magna Guard, I think. And um, I just moved them out of engagement range just to make sure that he had to spend some resources on getting back into combat and this is where my opponent has a big think about doing what he's about to do with the b2 so um, of course he does want to get uh, the wound on the aft troopers and that was a bit of a mistake on my part um, i positioned them a little bit too close to the midline to allow the b2s to have a snipe my saving grace is, of course, the fact that I've got a, a healthy um, clone commando and a healthy Obi-Wan Kenobi there uh, who are going to prevent him essentially just walking up and shooting. If he does want to have a crack at the aft troopers, he will need to engage um, at least one of them, uh, which is, of course, Obi-Wan. So what I do, I end up spending a force here on um, So Uncivilized just so... Um, I can try and prevent the double shove and then I can hopefully engage um, but I unfortunately roll one too too many expertise uh, and he does get the double shove which means that Obi cannot remove his hunker token um, to you know dash back and engage the the, the b2 battle droid that has not shot um, but what he can do, uh, even though these aft troopers are about to die or get wounded, he can remove his Anka token and just sit on that objective, which will, of course, even when the aft troopers inevitably get wounded, uh, keep the objective for me. So just a bit of a slippery little play there, um, just to keep some objective control and, and prevent my opponent from scoring four. Um, so yeah, that's essentially trying to keep me into the struggle uh, and see what happens. Uh, that will, of course, I think be the last activation for my opponent, um, and he will get pretty close to winning the objective of course or winning the struggle so I draw Anakin that's a little too early I don't really want to go with Anakin now uh, you know um, I, I do of course have the shadow point but it's just not really worth it at this stage so I do end up putting him into reserve I think anything else is really good at this stage you know if I draw Obi I shuffle the deck uh, if I draw the aft troopers like I have done now I'm, I'm happy and because my opponent is so close to winning this struggle I end up just trying to get uh, a bit of a better position. So I'll leave one of the ARF troopers on the objective uh, with Obi-Wan Kenobi, just so my opponent can't get it off of me um, because I will have two characters from different units um, and with one Magna Guard, it's not possible. So that um, ARF trooper will stay and then another one will sort of take cover to get a little bit closer to the other objective. And I'm just hoping to get one shove on that ARF trooper to put myself firmly on the back right objective here on my you know from my perspective um just to try and make the next struggle a little bit in more in my favor um so i do end up getting the um the the two strikes through which will allow me to get um uh, one shove uh, so here is the shove being resolved that's just a shove uh, a pin and i think one damage uh, in total because of protection there um so here is i think where i make another mistake i have the option to have more of a crack into um the the b2 battle droids to try and maybe get the wound on them um or you know get them close to being wounded i think they've taken five from a couple of attacks here but i end up trying to get the disarm on the magna guard just to make their activation a little bit uh, worse um and i think i only end up doing not much um, so I get one I get two crits through and my opponent blocks the rest um, so it is essentially just a pin uh, and two damage and that's fine um, but uh, I, I in hindsight I think maybe I should have gone for the b2s and um, gone for that play because I only needed uh, I think three successes on the b2s and they roll a lot less dice and they have less expertise etc but you know the momentum didn't really do anything at this stage because I'm pretty confident that the struggle is over but unfortunately the struggle goes one turn longer than I wanted um, I really really wanted it to flip there just so I have you know some more opportunity to um, to keep Rex alive but uh, he's gone cracking um, and not only is he going to get 
Rex wounded, he's also going to trigger um, Kraken's ability on the Magna Guard. So he's using a tactical network here to have a crack at the clone commandos just to try and get some wounds on them. Um, but um, the clone commandos with a hunker and only two damage and protection and steadfast, they're pretty darn hard to shift against these little um, these little attack dice from the you know, the, the tactical network, they only roll five. So I think he only ends up doing something like one or two damage uh, total. Um, and I end up, you know, deciding to use the hunker token here and dash into the center just to put another body on there as well, just to threaten for the next struggle, which I think is is worth it, um, even though I'm relatively confident that I've lost this struggle. And this is an attack into Captain Rex, um, who I was, of course, trying to fish for to stay alive. And uh, he, he will, of course, get uh, Captain Rex wounded, unfortunately. Um, but he won't get the struggle. He will be one away. Um, and because I've got a double wound on Captain Rex, I can't risk him going and being removed before struggle number three. So I end up pulling Obi, sorry, I end up pulling Anakin Skywalker, flipping him back into Gem So, and just um, having a crack at these Magna Guard to get a double wound on them as well, just to prevent them from being so readily used. Unfortunately, it's not a fantastic role, but that is of course why you can use, I'm going to end this. So I do spend two more force and I get another single activation wound on the Magna guard so yep really really good use of anakin's ability there just taking off a, a really key piece for my opponent which is of course the magna guard and their next activation will of course be their last and now we have the b2 battle droids having a crack into my clone commandos just to try and wound them uh, this was something that you know i i sort of expected to happen um but unfortunately yeah there's nothing really i can do about that now so it's a great roll uh, it's going to hit the reposition on the b2 battle droid combat tree as well and then um, they're essentially going to use that reposition to go ahead and take the or position themselves along the rear objective next to Cad Bane, just to try and make sure that they've got some good coverage for struggle number three, because this is, of course, the last activation. And then one of the other B2 battle droids is going to have a crack at one of the aft troopers under the bridge. I do, unfortunately, roll um, one, two, few dice here. Um, and um, it doesn't really matter, though, uh, luckily for me. So, uh, yeah, all they end up doing is the two damage from the expertise tree. So this is where the B2 battle droids can fall down. Down. No natural sort of um, sources of critical damage, etc. Uh, but you know the chip damage and all the tactical network overlapping, etc., is is phenomenal. So that is the end of struggle number three. Uh, sorry, number two, and we go into struggle number three, one apiece. So it is tight. Now the the middle is really good. This is the you know the the preemptive attack on the Magna Guard from Anakin is is fantastic for me. Um, so we are able to. Uh, probably score pretty heftily here uh, depending on who I draw so it is Anakin Skywalker's objective as well which makes me feel fantastic and I end up drawing Padawan Ahsoka so that's really good uh, it means that um, after some deliberation I can move uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi um, to, to get a second body next to Anakin Skywalker on that uh, left hand side objective which is really good and I have a big think about you know whether or not I should have a tr have a crack at the B2 battle droids or maybe Kalani or something but it's just gonna cost me a lot of resources and I'd have to get lucky right so what I end up doing is just doing a move um, and a take cover because the take cover is really nice on uh, Ahsoka um, you know, with all of her attack dice, sorry, all of her defense dice, her really nice defensive expertise chart, and of course a hunker token to synergize with knowledge and defense. So I just go for the conservative play, put a second really tanky body next to Anakin Skywalker, and um, yeah, we end up scoring three. So my opponent draws the shadow point here and decides to go for Kraken. I think I was probably more afraid of the Cad Bane attack here, just to repeat what happened in struggle one uh, against Ahsoka. So this is a Magna Guard attack into Obi-Wan Kenobi, um, and that's essentially going to get one shove on him um, and then this, the, the follow-up attack will of course be Kraken into uh, Anakin Skywalker and no matter what happens here even if he does get to shove him off Anakin does have a hunker token which really means that there's nothing that can be done to remove Anakin from that point so you know it is lucky that my opponent has the the priority objective in their center but uh, they don't flip anything which is uh, sort of the mark of, of them falling a little bit behind uh, which is a bit unfortunate for them so um, you know no matter what happened there Anakin could really sort of stay on the point I end up um, deciding you know I, I have taken I think one damage and a pin there um, so I, I do get rid of the hunker I heal a damage and then I use knowledge and defenses dash just to get straight back 
or just to, to move, which will clear the pin. So my opponent does only score two, and then I have an opportunity to control all four objectives depending on what I draw here. So um, a, quite, a, quite a turn of events there. I think the Cad Bane activation might have been a little bit more problematic for me. Um, but, um, you know, sorry, Cad Bane with uh, Shatterpoint. And I get lucky here. Well, I don't get lucky. I mean, this is just what comes up on the aura deck. Uh, and I get the commandos. So what I'm going to essentially do here is climb. Um, there is an ingress point on that. So I end up getting to the very top of the tower, putting two bodies on that point as well. I'm just going to have a cheeky little punch into the B2 battle droid that I am now engaged with, with the left-hand side clone commando. Getting two crits. It's just going to end up being one damage and a pin um, after the protection. And I'm pretty, pretty keen to try and remove this um, this uh, this B2 battle droid here because that will give me a momentum and it'll mean I score four. So I end up uh, also exposing this B2 battle droid and I've just realized that my opponent has also rolled one, two, few dice so it sort of balances out with that Arf Trooper. Uh, and I end up getting, um, I think it's two crits through here for the clone commandos. Yep, two crits. So that's essentially going to be um, another two damage and a pin which goes up to two or up to three, because he's already pinned down to one, but it's still not enough. So I end up having to spend another force for um, she is brave. Uh, so I end up, you know, triggering that. Um, she gets, sorry, Ahsoka gets to do a jump and a five dice attack, and that just manages to take this B2 battle droid out uh, with four successes, uh, down to three because of a block. And that essentially gives me, I uh, take the bottom tree here, so I'm gonna get the reposition uh, enough damage, a strain, and I get to position myself back up on the point, which is pretty good. I get a momentum. I am going to score all four points there, which is quite lucky. Uh, well, I, I keep saying lucky. Um, uh, it's just how the cookie crumbled. Uh, and uh, that will make it quite difficult for my opponent to take the struggle back um, uh, after that. So my opponent then decides... Um, he could either go with the Magna Guard or he could have, um, he, he ends up pulling Cad Bane. He decides not to go with the Magna Guard. Um, and this is essentially a Hail Mary play. So my opponent goes for uh, a move. Um, and then a jump, or oh, sorry, he, he goes for a climb here, and then he spends two force for a jump, uh, and he's got one play, which is essentially to try and do nine damage to Anakin Skywalker from ranged, and that is essentially what he tries to do. So uh, I'm clenched here because, you know, it, it would make a difference, um, but with Obi-Wan Kenobi, etc., so close, um, I mean, it would actually make it really difficult to take it off here. So I am clenched a little bit, and we will see how we go. He, he, he can do nine on this side, um, and we end up, uh, we're in gem so, so it's definitely not my most tanky side, but uh, Anakin's not exposed and um, all that kind of stuff. So he's got a pretty good defensive expertise tree and he's quite tanky. And that is of course not enough for my opponent. Um, so I end up taking, I think um, three damage and a disarm uh, and my opponent promptly concedes. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Something a little bit different. We will continue to do it. And if you of course have any feedback, let us know. Thanks.